Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research and I'm so excited to be working on this breadboarding circuits tutorial with you guys. We've been doing a lot with the Elegoo Uno, which is, comes in our kit. You can also use an Arduino Uno, which is the non-generic form. And today we're gonna wire up an LCD display and learn how to make it write something that we want to write. And then we will build on this project that we wire up today to make it into a fun scorekeeper for some sort of game that you wanna play. So you'll need your little breadboard, um, your brains of your computer, your LCD. This, these two pieces in our Elegoo kit will make our potentiometer. We have a little resistor here, and then I have some wires. You'll use your jumper wires that look kind of like this. All right, and let's get started. So we have all of our stuff pre-wired in a Tinkercad circuits tutorial that you should definitely check out, and that will help you figure out what all the pieces on this are. They're labeled right here. If you look really closely, there's a VSS, a VDD, a V0, RS, RW, E, and it goes D0 through 7, A, and K. And what we want to do is we're going to use these pins to wire it up. It will tell our LCD what to do. So the first thing we're going to do is put our LCD display in our breadboard. Now, you don't want to put it below this gap because remember, these columns are not connected through that gap. So if you put it here, and then you start connecting into these upper columns, it won't actually work. So make sure that you are connected into an upper column. And to put them in, there's a lot of pins here. What I like to do is just sort of rock it back and forth, pressing a little more each time so that if any pins aren't working, they don't sort of break out of the way and just smush. We don't want that. All right, so I have this inserted into my breadboard. And now we're going to wire up our breadboard with some power and some ground from our Uno. So I'm gonna use my jumper cables for that so it's a little more flexible. And there is one ground here, right by AH ref. So we can do that. And the way that you can, oops, double check that you have it into ground is if you look on the side, it gives you all of those things. So I'm gonna wire my ground into ground. And I don't have a five volts over here. I do have my five volts over in this power rail. So I'm gonna choose my five volts right there so you can check and make sure I love the silk screen they've done on this. And that is gonna go over into our hot side. We're gonna put them both over here, I think. It doesn't matter which side it's on, I just think that might make it easier for us. All right, so those two wires are in. That will give our breadboard power so we can wire into these power and ground rails instead of having to wire straight into the breadboard for those parts. So now we're gonna connect our ground to our LCD display. And we'll do that through just a little wire. And I will use one of these guys right here. And my ground that needs to happen here is this one right there. Now on my circuit, it's called VSS instead of ground. So I have VSS, VDD, and V0. And we are gonna plug that guy into ground. That goes into column two for me, just like that. All right, and now we're going to do our VCC to power. So we can put this in like that. And make sure that these wires go all the way in and make a good connection. All right, so there's those two wires. And next we're gonna connect a potentiometer. Now this potentiometer is gonna control how bright or dim our screen is. All right, now the potentiometer in Tinkercad is just three prongs. You'll notice ours are sort of two on the bottom and one on the top. So these two on the bottom is what we're gonna to connect to power and ground. Doesn't matter which one goes where. And the middle one is what we're gonna connect into our um, LCD display to control that. So you'll also notice these should not be able to touch inside of our breadboard. They won't be connected. Although I'm noticing I don't quite have enough room. So what I could do is we could either move this over to a big breadboard or we can just move this down and I'll put a bunch of jumper cables over. So we will jump this middle section every time we need to. In fact, I'll move it, oops, I'll move it down one more so that maybe we'll just wire straight on in. And that will give me space for 
that potentiometer. So this potentiometer is gonna go right up here now, takes up the whole span of that breadboard, just like that. And then to put this piece in, just sort of clicks in, you should be able to spin it, and we will be able to see what that does in a little while. Now because I moved this LCD down, this display, I need to actually connect these pieces right here. Otherwise, nothing that I've done is going to work for me. So I can get some little jumper cables right here and just go straight across to connect those two pieces to ensure that I don't have a problem later on. So there's those two pieces. If you had to move your potentiometer, it will now look like that for you. Okay, so next we are gonna connect our potentiometer, like we mentioned, to ground and to five volts. It's these two here that we're gonna to wanna to connect and then the middle one is gonna come out. Here is my black, which I can come right into here and plug that into ground, just like that. And if I have a shorter red, I can do the same thing to five volts. All right, and then I'm going to need to pull this middle piece out and that will go into my LCD. So I can put this one right in here in the middle, just going right into the middle column that I'm connected to, and that is going to go to my V0. Just like that. Beautiful. Great job, my friends. So now we're going to wire in power to the backlight of this. It uses an LED backlight. And so that needs to go into power. And the way that we can do that is, again, some more jumpers. And let's see, our LED has A and K. And so the A is what's gonna go into power. Let me go right above the row of A. And then I can go one more up, maybe. Let's do orange. Sometimes it's a little tricky with these breadboards getting it, making sure you're always in the right hole. All right, just like that. That one in, there we go. All right, and now it's not actually connected to power because these guys, none of these are connected. So we'll add another little jumper in there to connect it to power. Now, if you're using jumper cables, you can sort of skip this and go a little faster by just going straight from the bottom to the top. And I can show you that with our next part where we connect that to ground. We can do it through a resistor and we can just go straight from the K all the way up into our ground. It's one of those cases where having the long, nice big resistor can help us out. All right, make sure that you are connected really well into those holes. And then we are going to connect our read write here into ground, and that's because we don't actually ever read or write. Um, so that's the RW is the read write. We're not reading from this LCD into our um, computer. We are taking going from the computer into here and we're gonna write on it. So that guy can go to ground, and I can show you here if we just plug in, let's see here is our read write. We could use one of these jumper cables and instead of doing two wires that sort of go spanning, we can just go straight into ground like that. Now we're gonna connect all of our various um, data displays. So we are gonna go from D7 into pin two on our Arduino Uno. Now your pins might change depending on the way you have yours programmed. In fact, I am actually, I am gonna use the jumper cables I'm realizing because it'll give me a little more flexibility with my Arduino. So I'm gonna go from pin seven into pin two on the Uno. So that's the third hole up because we have the zero, it starts at zero, so zero, one, two. Make sure you go into pin two, especially if you are using our programming because our programming is going to tell us what pins that we're in. All right, similarly, we are going to put six into three and we're gonna sort of make a cascade here as we go, so six is gonna go into pin three. And I'll go right next door, just like that. And then we'll go, five is gonna go into pin four. 
So here is pin five. It says D5 on that, and that will go into pin four. You can see how sometimes it gets a little bit crazy with these wires. It's a little hard to not have that happening today. Four is gonna go into pin five for us. So let's go from four right there, right next to it, into pin five. I'm gonna go under these wires. This one's a little bit shorter. And make sure each time you sort of say them out loud, that will help you make sure that you're not um, getting things into weird spots. Now we're gonna put our enable into pin six, and that is going to help us determine, it's gonna help this guy know what to do. Now enable is marked with an E on your board, so we're gonna go to E right there, and that is going to go to pin six. So we'll come up to our board into pin six. Beautiful, you guys are doing a great job making this work. And lastly, we are gonna put our register select into pin seven. So register select is at RS, it's right in between right now, and that is gonna to go to pin seven. All right, so you can always pause and make sure that you have all these things um, filled out. You will have four in the middle that we don't use. So I have four empty spaces right here on my LCD display, and that's okay. I'm not using those ones. That's D0 through D3 that I'm not using, but everything else should have a wire going into that. A lot of these wires are gonna go into our Arduino Uno, and make sure that you have your five volts and your ground connected into the breadboard. Those are some really common errors that we will have trouble with. So we are all done with our wiring here. We are gonna to need to program it, so I'm gonna connect this board into my computer using that printer cable that comes with it. And then we can add our programming in. All right. All right, so when I plug it in, you can see this LCD display, the backlit turned on, so there's it off and not plugged in. When I plug it in, I get this backlighting, which is great, that's what I want. And now we need to add the programming code onto this Arduino Uno. And the way that we're gonna do that is through our Tinkercad code that we wrote. If you haven't checked that out, you can totally check it out on our YouTube Tinkercad Circuits Tutorials, and we walk you through how to make that code, but I'll show it to you right now. So here is our circuit in Tinkercad that we just wired up. And then if we come up here to code in our previous video, we wrote all this lovely code. It's not a ton, it's not really hard work to write this code, um, but the important things here are where we define our pins that we pinned into that board. So if you put your pins into different numbers over here, you're gonna wanna make sure that you change that because this is what's telling the computer where to put the data and the enabling and all of those sorts of things. So that's really important. The other important thing is that we are going to need to include a liquid crystal library this time. This is one of the first times we've had to include a library and we'll show you how to do that. So the first thing that we'll do is we're gonna copy all of our code and we'll take that over into our Arduino IDE. Once we're in our Arduino IDE, we have a new sketch. We're going to delete everything that was there and paste in our code from Tinkercad. Now, if I try to verify this and we can save it, it's gonna be unhappy, I think, because this liquid crystal. We haven't, oh, it was happy. If yours is not happy, I have probably already used some liquid crystals, which is maybe why, but you can come up and add a library in your menu area, and that is under sketch, and it's include library, and it'll give you a whole bunch of libraries and lists that you can use for that, and then you would find the liquid crystal library, and you would just download that, and it goes on in for you. All right, so this is done compiling. It's really happy. We can send it to our board right here. And oh, it says there's a problem with our board. And what it's saying is that it can't open the device on COM 12. And so that tells me that I, on my tools, haven't double checked that I have my board as Arduino Uno. Unfortunately, you guys can't see our menus, but if you go to tools, 
Halfway down it says board and you have a whole bunch of lists. Make sure you choose the Arduino Uno. And then the port, you need to choose the one that says Arduino Uno because I plugged it into a different USB port on my computer earlier. So if I choose port 11 for myself, then I am uploading. You can kind of see it flash a little bit. And it says it is done uploading. And it should be displaying our hello world. We're not seeing it quite yet, and that's what we can use our potentiometer for. As you move this potentiometer, see how it comes in and goes away? So that is what the potentiometer is for. You can choose sort of that level that is right for you. You can see if I go too much, it's like kind of hard to see. This Everything's a little lighter. If I go too little, it's also kind of hard to see. You gotta get just that sweet spot like that, and you will see your LCD display light up. So don't worry if when you turn it on, it sort of looks like this, and you're like, where is my text? You want to make sure that you sort of twist this little potentiometer until it comes on and you see your text. And then of course, if you want to change your text, you can come up here and you can change the text that you have. You can say, great job team. And maybe we don't even want anything on the bottom. And then if you re-upload that, we will see it show up. There we do. So this is a fun little project. And in our next few videos, we're gonna add some more stuff to this so that we can put some buttons in there and keep score, which will be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining us as we wired up this LCD display. We hope to see you in our other breadboarding and Tinkercad circuit tutorials. Have a great one, friends. Bye.